Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, I support the amendment. Before I do, I'd like to thank uh, Senator McKinney uh, for his leadership in putting this budget together. Senator Kane, uh, Senator Rohrbach, uh, Representative Miner, Representative Candelora, and the uh, team behind the team, if you would, Lisa Hammersley and uh, Jared Schmidt. Uh, putting the budget together as a minority party is extraordinarily difficult in that our resources are not quite uh, as uh, plentiful as our resources um, as the majority party of the governor's office. Uh, and I think that this budget presents a, a good budget, but more importantly, <clears throat> is a good budget in which to compare against the majority budget that was put forward. There is a true, true philosophical difference. And the difference is simple. Do you believe we need $1.8 billion of new taxes, or do you believe we need to change the way government works and the expenditures of government? That's the choice, one or the other. It seems to me we have continued down the path of expanding governor, of government and expanding our expenditures and increasing our taxes year in and year out. For that, what do we have to show? Over 9% unemployment, UTC, UBS, and other companies moving out of the state of Connecticut. As I mentioned a few times at this circle, Marlin Firearms, in my neck of the woods, 330 job, a printing company, another 250 jobs. They're leaving. Why? Because Connecticut is unfriendly. So what do we do? With above 9% unemployment, what do we do? We increase taxes on everything. Businesses from 10% to that 20%? Is that really where we're going? Is that really what we're trying to do? We're trying to suck out of people's pockets taxes to grow government on a budget that this is being contrasted with, that is raising spending over a billion dollars in two years? Most companies I talk to are shrinking, holding back. I run a small business, a lot like Rob Kane. I actually started mine a lot about the same time as Rob Kane, 1995. And I can tell you, as expenses and taxes go up, you as a business need to make cuts. Sometimes that's employment. But it's definitely a lot of fringe benefits that you do for your boys. That's just the reality. Businesses do not have the luxury that state government has, which is to say we don't have enough money, we're going to go tax. Businesses have to drive customers in. And what we do in this state is I can't think of any place that we don't pinch businesses. Energy, corporation tax, diesel. No matter what you look at, we tax them and we hurt them. If you want to drive an economy, you've got to flourish it with money. So people go out and spend. That's what drives it. Our population has only grown since 1987 at 5%, and our budgets have grown at 287%. That speaks volumes. And all the budget does that we're contrasting the Republican budget to is further that growth of government. We've got to stop, and it's our obligation to stop it. So when you look at the difference of this budget, Republican budget as an amendment before you, versus the Democratic budget, you'll see it is clear. Two different philosophies. The vote seems to me simple. We've tried the other way, and Connecticut is stalled. We've tried the other way, and our economy is getting tighter. We've tried the other way, and we're faced with $6 billion in debt over two years. Now, I heard some conversations that businesses are embracing this majority budget. I got to tell you, I'm a business. I'm in this circle. I run a business. I run two businesses. 
I don't embrace this budget. I embrace the Republican budget. Because I'm looking for government to do what I do at home and what I do in my business. Control expenses. That's our obligation to our constituency. That's our obligation to our children, our grandchildren. That's the obligation that we have to the state. If we don't do it now, I cannot think of another time that we will do this. I know it's tough. And I know there's some cuts. But it's tough every place. When we cut the um, campaign financing, what we're saying is taxpayers can no longer afford to pay for our campaigns. How is that so hard to swallow? How is that so difficult to do? To say we're not going to take taxpayers' money to make signs, to give out pencils. We think your money belongs more in your pocket than they do for pencils that we pass out for voters. What is so wrong with that philosophy? I don't understand it. This is a change. This is a change. So, Madam President, I strongly support this amendment. I urge passage. There's no question in my mind as a person who runs a business, no question in my mind that this budget is going to have a negative, dramatic effect upon businesses. I know people in this chamber don't agree with me, and you're entitled to that. But I don't know how many people in this chamber run a business. I don't know how many people in this chamber have to worry about payroll. I don't know how many people in this chamber have to worry about cost. I don't know how many people in this chamber stay up at night wondering how they're going to make the bills at the end of the week. I do. I do. And that is tough. And it's a big burden. So when you add these taxes, Madam President, I think it adds to that. So with that, Madam President, I am discouraged in one sense, but I have hope and optimism in the other. So, Madam President, uh, I will be voting no on this budget. Thank you.